So in this segment, we're going to be talking about the Americans saying that just the Americans saying the UK threatening to invoke Article 16 threatens peace in Northern Ireland. And so just the mere kind of suggestion that the UK is um, threatening to use Article 16 is causing problems, according to the Americans. And um, in this case, they are right. So US politicians have warned that the UK threats to tear up the post-Brexit trade um, rules in Northern Ireland are a threat to the peace process. A plan to invoke Article 16 of the Northern Ireland Protocol threatens to not only destabilise trade relations, but also that hard-earned peace for senior Democrats who chair the powerful uh, committees within the House of Representatives have warned. And this is important that the US, you know, destabilising trade is one thing, but destroying peace in Northern Ireland, which is very, very hard to get in the first place, would be an absolute disaster for for Ireland, the entirety of Ireland. They added, we call on the UK to abandon the dangerous path and to commit to implementing the Northern Ireland Protocol in full. And this is the Americans getting involved now. The signatories include Gregory W. Meeks, chair of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, and Brendan Boyle, chair of the House European Union Caucus. The statement says the Northern Ireland Protocol was a significant achievement during the volatile Brexit process and its full implementation is critical for ensuring Brexit does not undermine decades of progress towards peace on the island. There are a lot of Americans invested in peace in Northern Ireland and Britain would be very, very stupid to um, not heed these warnings. It adds, in threatening to invoke Article 16, just the threat of invoking Article 16, of the Northern Ireland Protocol, the United Kingdom threatens not only to destabilise trade relations, but also that hard-earned peace. The UK's Brexit Minister Frost on Wednesday repeated threats to um, trigger Article 16, a unilateral move which would suspend Northern Ireland trade rules. That's not true, and it very I, I get very annoyed about this when people... Um, this is the second time the Independent have failed to understand what Article 16 does. It leads to more talks where the UK have to give the EU a month's notice before it can take any action. And if the, whatever the UK does, the EU can take um, actions um, in in response to whatever the UK has done. It works the other way around as well. But but it does not suspend Northern Ireland trade rules just like that. It doesn't. Um, and Boris Johnson agreed with the EU less than 12 months ago. However, he told the House of Lords he believes that he believes a process of crunch talks with the EU has not reached its end, despite four weeks of little patience. You know, and people are running out of patience. I am, for sure, but I'm not that invested in this. Uh, Frost claimed there remain possibilities that the talks have not yet seriously ex um, uh, examined, including many approaches suggested by the UK. I mean, mate, they've looked at your command paper and said this thing's a joke. You know, your suggestion to get rid of the ECJ, they said that's a joke. So, no, they have looked at what you said and they said no. The UK government has set a December deadline to find a solution on the Northern Ireland Protocol. Now, I was thinking about this, right? And I, I swear Frost said I set an October deadline because I, I, I looked around a bit on the old Google, right? And he said cabinet ministers suggested it could come as soon as mid to late November. So they've said they could trigger Article 16 in November, right? And I'm sure Frost said in October he wanted a solution. And now my guy's saying there's a December deadline. Like, if you keep moving the deadlines, no one's going to take you seriously. I think you should have learned that from Theresa May, mate. The Irish government has joined a chorus of voices urging the UK not to trigger um, Article 16. Um, you know, you've got Lydia Varadkar saying on Wednesday, I believe this is Varadkar anyways, you are part of negotiating it, you own it, it's hard won, it's a mistake to think that by escalating tensions or by trying to withdraw from any part of it, you will end up with a better deal, you won't. I think Maureen McInnes said something similar. Crossbench peer Lord J of somewhere, chairman of the House of Lords subcommittee on the protocol warned that the move would revive the prospect of a no-deal trading relationship between the UK and the EU. And let's not forget here, there's only one side that can put tariffs on goods, and it's not the UK, because we don't have the facilities for that. Frost told Piers, I gently suggest that our European friends should stay calm and keep things in proportion. So a very stupid statement, if you're going to do dumb stuff, expect a strong response. Not a hard one to figure out, Frost. They might remind themselves that no government and no country has a greater interest in stability and securing security in Northern Ireland in the Good Friday Agreement than we do. That's not true. Um, 
pretty much any other country that isn't the UK is more invested in keeping the Good Friday Agreement in place. Um, the Irish definitely are, the Irish um, Ireland as a country, the European uh, Union countries definitely are, and the Americans definitely are. So what a dumb statement that is. He said, we are hardly like to proceed in a way that puts all that at risk. And that is why you have the EU constantly saying, stop what you're doing, don't try and pull anything with your failed interpretation of Article 16. And now you've got the Americans getting involved and saying, stop what you're doing, stop being a clown. Um, and so how can Lord Frost with a straight face say that no country is more invested in keeping the Good Friday Agreement than GB are or than England are when there are multiple other countries more invested in keeping the Good Friday Agreement as is? Honestly, honestly, if the EU were to choose to react in a disproportionate way and decide to aggravate the problems in Northern Ireland rather than reduce them, that is, of course, a matter for them. Well, mate, it's a matter for you. You're the one causing all the problems here, Chief. Not a hard one to figure out. The Iceman. Um, so that's Gregory uh, Minks. Um, that's the Sky article. Um, there was an interesting article I saw. It's quite old. But um, it is about why um, Joe Biden is so invested in peace within Northern Ireland. Which is something... I, I think I'll leave that for another video. Because it'll be quite long. It's a really um, interesting article. What I'll do is I'll link this in the comments if you want to read it now. If not, I'll cover it in the next few weeks at some point. But um, he does talk about his kind of, um, his mother, I think, being Irish, him quoting a lot of Irish poems. Let's not forget that infamous, you know, quote where the BBC asked him for a quote as he, you know, he's, he won the presidency. He's saying, you know, I'm Irish or something like that anyways. So, you know, he clearly wants Britain to remember that, um, you know, don't F around and find out essentially, do not do this. And if we actually look at the list of countries by trade, um, the, obviously the European Union is British, biggest, uh, Britain's biggest large and trading partner, um, but you've got the US there, in, you know, in in uh, first place in terms of individual countries, um, in terms of total trade, and then you've got Germany, the Netherlands, France, China, Ireland, Spain, Belgium, Italy, Switzerland, so mainly EEA countries, barring America and the U, uh, barring. The US and China, which are obviously, you know, economic superpowers when you look at both countries. So it's very interesting that um, you've got to think that if the UK decides to do something stupid with the Northern Ireland Protocol, we would lose our biggest single trading partner, the EU, but also individual countries like the United States, for example. Now, I don't think China would do anything in terms of san sanctions, but we would lose essentially um, nine out of our top 10 trading partners. We would face sanctions from them. Nine out of our top ten, because I'd imagine Switzerland would be sucked into it as well, um, in terms of tariffs and things like that, potentially. Um, it, nine out of ten, or eight out of ten, we would lose in terms of our top trading partners. That's wild, um, if we decide to do anything stupid. But you can see here an American intervention here, and it's not just the president. It is multiple uh, U.S. senators and Congress, Congress people getting involved here and telling the UK you'd be very, very careful about what you do. And let's not forget, it was the Americans who stopped the um, us getting, you know, committing to the Suez crisis as well. The Americans saying, what are you doing in Egypt? And we're like, no, nothing, bro. So I wouldn't be surprised if the Americans asked us, what are you doing with the Northern Ireland Protocol? And we said, no, nothing, bro. I could imagine that being the case. But um, the Americans getting involved, I know the other dudes have covered it, the other kind of um, people covering politics, they've talked about the American intervention, so um, I kind of missed the... Not missed the boat, I kind of had to catch myself up about it because it was very sudden. It's very sudden that Lord Frost's cha uh, tone changed very quick. The Iceman beginning to thaw a bit there. Very interesting. Anyways, I'm going to leave it there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.